Hey guys, today I started to look at Prisma, which is a new library by the people who make GraphQL. And it just came out maybe a week or two weeks ago. And what it's supposed to do is turn your database into a GraphQL API. So I wanted to see what this means and what it's like to get this set up and actually running and create an API with it. So first thing I did was come over here to command line and just install this thing with npm i uh, and install it globally like this and install Prisma. Now I know some of you are probably wondering, hey Ben, how come you're not installing this as a local dependency and using MPX? And actually I tried that first and it doesn't work as expected. So here is hello, this is just like a little uh, NPM package I just made or project. It has nothing inside of it right now and I had installed Prisma and I tried doing Prisma init dot. So this is what you run to initialize a Prisma project and uh, it gives you two options. You can either choose doing a database only or let's say you wanna do some JavaScript with it, you can use GraphQL server. Now I tried both of these out, but I tried doing this kid first and it says, sorry, your folder must be empty. So I was like, okay, fair enough. So then the only way to do it is to install it globally. So I have it installed globally and I ran it first on my hello to over here and uh, I chose the database choice. So I said, hey, I want to do a database. And then it's like, okay, would you like to deploy this locally or to uh, the cloud? And I just picked uh, locally for now, which it looks like you need to have Docker installed, uh, which I did have it installed already. And if we say Docker container LS, we can actually see I have a MySQL instance running and uh, Prisma running as well. So this actually runs uh, in Docker. And if you didn't know, Prisma only works on MySQL right now, but they're planning to do other databases later. But if we take a look at this, there's two files here that they give you right off the bat. I haven't touched a single thing. Here, this looks normal. This is like a uh, GraphQL type. And this is looks a little different, right? But this is part of uh, the language basically and so instead of basically creating a database so with post graphql which if you haven't heard of it similar idea uh, but just with post or with uh, yeah post sql uh, postgres sql i mean uh, you actually create the database and then it creates the graphql for you with this one you create this graphql schema like thing and then it creates the database from this uh, and you don't even have to have MySQL installed because it runs inside Docker. Docker is the only thing you need to have installed. And then some settings were in here were uh, Prisma. So here's Hello2. These are just some like, this is like a, I thought it was like a package.json for uh, Prisma. Just some config stuff. And uh, auth is off by default, which we'll talk about in a second. So if you do click the deploy locally and you have Docker installed, it'll go ahead and spin up an instance and it'll tell you the location. Here's the location it told me. And it has such a nice uh, graphical. This is graphical, um, but their own version, which I think they call GraphQL Playground. I knew this existed, but I forgot about it. And I forgot, I think you can run this with any GraphQL project. I should just start using this over graphical because it's, it's just way better. It looks way nicer. You can do tabbing which is really nice. You can add tokens to the header and stuff. And uh, I like how this expands outward like this. I like the little things. So uh, I should start using this more. So that was the first thing. I really like this. I did a little editor for graph, uh, graphical. And uh, here, uh, it did the same thing that uh, PostGraphQL did. Um, I created all this stuff for us, but notice how it's a little much cleaner. Um, so we can create a user if we wanted to. We can do a mutation. So create user and data and I'm like all right what do I need to put in my data so I just come over here to my docs I see data it says I need to pass in a user create input and I'm like what the heck is that I can see the arguments right here and I need to pass in a name all right so name hello and we'll call him Bob so create that and the scheme is in the way but we see he's here so now I can query my users and I'm like, all right, let's grab the ID and the name, run it. We see this, so cool, all right? So create all that stuff. And as you saw, it has update, delete, upsert, nice, um, lots of different things. I like that they also have batch, 
of batching. I don't know if this was also a thing that they had in uh, the other one. Interestingly enough, they don't have batch create user. Uh, but you can delete multiple users and update many users, which is very nice. I'm surprised there's not a um, update or create many users at once too. But maybe that's included in this, I don't know. So pretty nice, and this is pretty much very similar to what PostgreSQL did and seems nice, but again, you can't really use this for anything except for like maybe some prototyping or a qu quick project uh, because all you really have access to is these two files, right? This data model. You don't have control of the server. All I can really touch to modify this is this, this file and this other config over here. So it's going to be kind of hard to do anything with this, uh, but it's nice for prototyping, right? But luckily, as you saw, there was not there's more than one option. Uh, the other option, which actually I have open in Visual Studio Code right now, which is over here, this is the other option, is it actually gives you some boilerplate for setting up a server. And there's a lot of stuff going on here that I was just trying to wrap my head around, and I'll kind of talk about what I think everything is doing at least right now. Um, so there's database source, and at first I actually thought this was um, I was really confused actually what Prisma was actually doing, but uh, we'll talk about what I think it Prisma is in a second. So here it sets up a Prisma server um, in this index file, and we have some resolvers here and query. So basically this is where their GraphQL uh, mutations and query the resolvers are at. And uh, you'll notice they're running the CTX DB query stuff. This is from Prisma. Um, this is how they're running their things and I believe this is not auto-generated I believe this is just the boilerplate that they gave us if we want to add for example another query we can just add on to it and I actually like this I like that I have access to resolvers like this that I can actually see what's going on uh, it just makes a lot of sense like that and then they set up a server they're using their own uh, GraphQL yoga which is uh, Basically, it builds on top of Apollo server and adds some features onto that, which uh, I have no problem with. It makes it a little bit easier. Notice how like I can just pass the type defs in there like this. Pretty nice, and uh, it just reads in a doc GraphQL file, so that's pretty cool. I'm totally cool with having that. And then you'll see this is where they're passing in uh, their context, right? So this is where we might use, for example, SQLize. Uh, we're passing in a new Prisma object instead, and then we use Prisma, and then we tell it the endpoint here, uh, localhost 466, hello dev, all that stuff. Um, so this looks exactly like a SQLize object, and uh, what I th I think Prisma is literally just SQLize, or uh, it's pretty it's just an ORM, uh, but it's specific to GraphQL and like you write stuff in GraphQL. So let me show you what I mean. So like this is this is our uh, you know our SQLize thingy where we initialize it. Um, the difference is it's doing it's just trying to do a lot more things. So uh, secret this is for authentication which I'm actually not quite sure yet how that works. But uh, we're passing it the generated Prisma GraphQL so it knows all of your um, GraphQL stuff, all your types and things, the endpoint where your database is at, well not your database, actually I don't know what this endpoint is for, um, I don't know why we're passing this in, the endpoint of the Prisma database service, this, I mean, okay, so this is hello3, this is pointed at what this thing is, 466, yep, it's pointed at the same thing, so the, I, I assume this is the GraphQL endpoint, I don't know why we do that here. Um, I guess maybe that's where our database is at too. Not quite sure. Don't know what's going on here with the, the Prisma thingy there. I'm still quite new to this though. But uh, we have our resolvers here. And now this is a database folder over here is just like our models. But instead of uh, doing the models in JavaScript, they do the models in GraphQL. So here's my type and do posts. And now whenever I make changes, it looks like um, it automatically migrates the database for you to, to match what uh, this 
this little typing is. Now, uh, there's some things like this is a, a pro and a con. So I like for development auto migration. Like if I just add another field here, I don't know Bob, which is a string, and then it just adds that for me. That's cool and stuff. Um, but sometimes auto migrations don't work the way you want them to and it's nice to have power over what your database looks like and being able to migrate the database yourself so it's pros and cons like in production I would rather migrate the database myself than have this auto do it but for development that's super nice I like that it auto migrates when we make changes but yeah this is our model um, instead of using JavaScript we just type it in GraphQL and then notice how this post we can use over here in our schema so we make the schema here uh, this is where we write all our queries and our mutations, but all our types we put in the database because these are going to be models, right? Um, and then our scheme over here, we write this, I believe, and notice we just use post here. Not sure why this is commented out. Um, the other thing I was kind of <laughs> weirded out by, um, not weirded out, but I thought was interesting. Notice how they use require syntax here, and then they use uh, the newer import syntax there. So I don't know why they have this commented out like this. And I'm assuming this doesn't even work. I'm because I, it doesn't look like Babel is what they give you with this boilerplate, um, and Node version is not high enough to do imports yet. I don't think, or I don't think Node supports it yet. But anyway, you write all your. So we would still make our own schema um, like this. This is not auto generated. What's auto generated is this thingy over here, which is um, a few extra things, right? So given that we have. Uh, this post model it then generates this stuff right here and so what I'm not sure about see look it gives us a whole bunch of extra stuff so I don't know if this is also combined with uh, look at these things so I didn't I don't have anything I don't have create post um, and all the other stuff but in this Prisma GraphQL I have uh, more stuff and I have this open in an endpoint but I guess there's authentication on, so I'm not, um, I don't have access to it yet. So I need to figure out how to uh, create myself a token for this, or at least remove my token, because it looks like my token is messing things up. Um, I don't see anything in a header, but I guess I have something in local storage probably messing this up. So I can't even actually see, so there's a way to gate it, which is pretty cool. But I can't even see the schema that's that was created, at least from this JavaScript version. But I'll try to figure that out. But this is the generated stuff. It even tells us don't touch this stuff. And it's generated from, I believe, this. So I think what happens is you make changes to this and then you're like, hey, Prisma, generate this for me. Um, and then we can then create, I believe these are our own custom mutations on top of the default ones that they give us. So they auto-generate some stuff for you and then you can mix in your own things is what it looks like. I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna try to get this running and then I'll tell you guys uh, tomorrow. So tomorrow what I will wanna look at is getting this actually running, what they give us, um, at least with the JavaScript version. And then also there's a full stack uh, React version. Let's see what that's, what that's about. Uh, the only thing I kind of, and it's off put to me, is how they just like auto do stuff in Docker for you. Um, so the two things right now that I'm like kind of not liking, but the rest I'm liking, one is it auto migrates, so bad for production. Unless, uh, I could also, I could be wrong on all these things. These are just my initial impressions for trying it out for a little bit. Looks like they seed some data for you, that's nice. Um, uh, the other thing is the Docker. It seems weird that they just auto deploy this to Docker for you. Now I guess I don't even have to worry about that. I can just run npm start and it starts up the server okay with that. Um, I need to see if this actually works with if I have my own MySQL database. I don't like that they're trying to just like run a MySQL database on their own with uh, Docker. I would rather them just uh, say, hey, we're SQLized, you set up your own uh, MySQL database and then I can point it to it and I can run Docker if I want to. But I guess, I don't know what, why they're trying to do that. I don't know if they're trying to make it easier on people or uh, what, but yeah, it struck me as very similar to SQLize, at least with what it looked like here. 
right? So I, they create all this stuff for me to query the database and things and create. Um, and then I set up my model like SQLize. It looks like they're just auto-generating GraphQL as well for us. So that's the thing that's a big plus. It makes this better than SQLize. And personally, I don't like SQLize that much. So I'd be happy using this over SQLize. But yeah, we'll dig in deeper tomorrow. This is just my initial lookings at it. And uh, I want to spend more time with it because it has good potential to be something good. Uh, but that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.